FYI, we invite into the studio Clinton Mayor Scott Madison. Now, we kind of rearranged things this uh, month. You were up in Michigan. How did that go? Oh, it was awesome. So I, uh, my, my grandma is originally from Traverse City, Michigan. Um, found out that my grandpa's actually originally from Chicago. Did not know that. And he moved up there and they met. And, and uh, so we went up there for a family reunion. Haven't been up there um, actually since my grandpa passed away in 2003. And uh, got to meet some family that I've never met before from my grandma's side, which was a lot of fun. And uh, if you've never been to Traverse City, Michigan, it's just a beautiful area. So, uh, you know, we hung out on the beach a little bit. Uh, we went uh, kayaking. Uh, down a river, which was pretty cool, and we had a lot of, of my family from the local area here that went up with us, so it was a good time. So what did your uh, cousins in Michigan think of you as being mayor of the city of Clinton? Oh, they they <laughs> thought it, they kept asking me questions, because it's, you know, uh, state to state, you know, mayors are different, you know, their roles, you know, and right. they're a lot different up in Michigan than they are here as far as the roles and how they do things, but uh, um, it was, uh, you know, it was fun, and they thought it was pretty cool, and I will tell you, I now that I've done this, I, when I travel to other places, I try to pay attention more. And I took some pictures of some stuff. And one thing, we're working on wayfinding in Clinton. And Leslie down at the uh, Grow Clinton is working on it. And, and Traverse City does a really nice job having these big signs that got this little graphic on them. So they're kind of eye-catching or whatever. And uh, I took some pictures and I uh, came back and I talked to Leslie about it. She's like, oh, that's kind of what we're doing. And I'm like, perfect because it, it really looked nice yeah. up there because they're kind of a touristy uh, mm -hmm. area up there so little bits and pieces things like that but uh, it, it was cool to kind of kind of see those types of things and maybe we can bring back some ideas here what's the population up there boy I I think the the surrounding area is I think 150,000 mm -hmm. but the Traverse City area itself is is much smaller than that mm -hmm. so um, I think that was right. I, we, I actually looked it up when I was up there. But are they, they on the lake? They are. So they're on Traverse Bay. So you like you know Michigan looks like a mitten. Right. Uh, they're at the bottom of the bay. So the the east it'd be the west side of the state is Lake Michigan, and there's a little little finger that comes down. So they're right on that, and um, they're big for you know growing cherries. That's their big thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, I stopped along a couple roadside things and got some different cherries, and it was they're 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 good. So and they do everything up there cherry. They did, you know, <laughs> cherry whiskey, cherry potato chips, cherry this, cherry that. So you know, you get overwhelmed with that up there. <laughs> We do have an opening on the council, so uh, talk about this. Yeah, so we unfortunately had a, a resignation uh, for one of our at-large seats, um, and uh, so uh, per code, we have 40 days to uh, appoint somebody or get somebody into that seat. Now, we looked at putting it on the election for November because we do have an election coming up, uh, working with the county auditor. We were not able to get it on the general election ballot because of timing. Uh, we can't do it two weeks before the election. We can't do it two weeks after the election. So uh, doing it before would have been a really tight timeline for people to get papers in because they'd have to get signatures to run and all that stuff. Um, also, there's a you know six to eight thousand dollar cost to do a special election. Um, so we kind of decided, or the council decided, to do an appointment process. Um, what that entails is we we take applications in. We do interviews, and then council would, would appoint whichever person they feel would, would fit best uh, for the council. Then um, we're going to do – so application is due by 3 o'clock today. It's been open for a couple weeks. We have six applications right now, which oh. is exciting. Um, very Six very good candidates, too, if you're looking through the application. I don't really know – I know a couple of them. I don't know them all real well, so it would be nice to get to know each of them as we're doing that. Uh, 3 o'clock, that ends. 4 o'clock, we're going to have a – uh, meeting down at City Hall um, to talk about uh, how we're going to approach the, we're going to interview on Monday evening, uh, how we're going to approach that. Monday will be interviews, and then if everything falls in line, council would make uh, a motion to and, and pass an appointment on Monday, and then hopefully we could swear them in on Tuesday. Um, because uh, or right before the council meeting so they could be there for that. We're on a short timeline ourselves because we have a couple council members that are going to do some vacation at the end of this month, and I think it's very important that all six of them are present when we do interviews, we do an appointment. I don't want even one missing. You could pass it with one missing, but I think it's important that all six of them are there uh, for that. So kind of a quick quick process, um, and then this person that's appointed will show up on the 
November 23 ballot okay. as an at-large to fill a vacancy. So that the citizens would then get to vote uh, for whoever runs for that seat then, the person we appoint or other people, uh, to fill out the rest of that uh, another two years. So, so this is an at-large position. It's an at-large, yep. And again, they'll have that for about a year? So they're guaranteed that one year, yeah. the person that's appointed. Yeah. And then, like I said, they'll be on the ballot next in 23 November and uh, if that person's the only one that's in there, then then you know, and they run, then they they would be seated it, uh, again. They'd have to swear in again, which is kind of weird, but <laughs> it's all right. It's how the code works. So, uh, but then somebody else could come in too if they're interested, and that would be to fill the next two years, and then from there you'd have to decide if you wanted to run for another four-year term. Were you surprised by the number of applications? I, I actually was, and and the reasoning is. When, this, when the two at-large seats were on the ballot last year in November, we only had two uh, folks that uh, ran, uh, uh, Councilmember Davis and, and uh, former Councilmember Witt. So those are the only two that put their names in. Uh, but then now we have this seat that's open and we have six applicants. So uh, surprised, yes, that we got six because we didn't have as many during the, general, or the, the actual election, but also happy because... Uh, we have a really good group to choose from. And I think uh, if you look at all of them, they have different backgrounds. They have all, they all have different, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, work backgrounds and education backgrounds and things like that. So it'll be interesting to kind of see uh, when questions come out and, and how they answer and what council, what council feels. We've done really successful, or we've been successful with appointments in the past. Ron Musman's still here. He was an appointment originally. Um, Cody was appointed. Uh, Councilmember Seeley was appointed. Uh, so, I mean, you can get some really good people from the appointment process. So, surprised, yes, but happy. Talk about the interview process. I mean, are all six applicants there at the same time? Is it done one on one? When is it done? So, today at four o'clock, that's going to be discussed. In the past, we've only had two, three applicants, so we kind of had all three of them there at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, the council could choose today where they only want to interview three of the six. They could choose they want to interview all, all the six. Um, it's kind of up to them. The one thing that I brought up in the last meeting that we talked about is um, in the past we've done like we asked a question and then go down the line and let everybody answer. But we're going to try to change it up because we feel like the answers kind of get muddied or they just kind of blend together because mm -hmm. it's like, well, I agree with that person and right. they don't really have. So we want to find a way to ask similar questions on the topics but not go down the line and let each person answer all in a row because we really want to get to know the individual and kind of their their viewpoints and their their philosophies versus uh you know all six saying yeah i like that you yeah. know because that doesn't really give the council much information yeah that's a good point because that often does take place yeah yeah so they're not individual and and the way it'll work too is um we'll have the interview on monday then the council, uh, if they choose to, uh, will go into closed session uh, because if you're going to discuss, you know, so-and-so said this, I like this, I didn't like this, you don't want to do that in a public meeting because that could be, yeah. you know, defamatory to someone's character. So we would go into closed session and the six would have to allow that, obviously. Um, and as long as they're okay with that, we'd go into closed session, have that discussion, come out, bring everybody back in, and then... Um, then the council would make a motion to. So now point. if you've got the six and you do the interview process and you talk amongst each other and you really can't decide, maybe it's down to just two. Yeah. What do you do then? So you can't make a decision in closed session. You can only have a discussion. You can't come out of closed session knowing what you're going to do. Okay. I mean, you can, you have an open discussion. Um, we would come out of closed session and then I would just kind of open it up. I'll entertain a motion from council, you know, and uh, um, council, if someone makes a motion, I make a motion that we appoint so-and-so. And then we wait. Is there a second? Okay. If there's a second, we do that and we vote on it. God, it, it takes four votes. So it's going to take four out of six. So right. in your scenario, if there's two, it could be... Three and three could be difficult. Yeah, yeah that could, would be interesting. So it'll it'll be uh, it'll be interesting on on how it how it plays out. But we're going to follow the process um, according to state code, and we're going to we'll we're going to figure it out, right? We have to. <laughs> right. <laughs> a good point. Again, on FYI, visiting with Scott Madison. Let's take a break for the weather. Brought to you by Morrison Community Hospital. More of the same today with mostly sunny skies. We'll see highs in the low 80s, and tonight mostly clear as well. 
Temperatures dropping into the low 60s. Friday, though, some changes working in. Initially dry in the morning, but a good round of showers and storms likely later in the afternoon with highs in the low 80s. And a few active thunderstorms possible as we start the weekend on Saturday. Those will be mainly in the afternoon and evening and a cooler day as well with highs in the mid-70s. With your Storm Track 8 forecast, I'm meteorologist Andrew Stutsky. Right now, sunshine. We're at 70 degrees. Our update brought to you by Morrison Community Hospital. We're excited to announce the opening of Dr. Maddox's new office in Clinton at the Westgate Medical Plaza on Highway 30 next to Culver's. Dr. Maddox specializes in treatment of varicose veins, gallbladder, appendectomies, upper and lower scopes, breast hemorrhoid, ectomies, and hernia repairs. Dr. Maddox will be available for patients in Clinton on Mondays and Tuesdays and the Morrison Community Hospital Wednesday through Friday. Please join us in celebrating our new office and welcoming Dr. Maddox. You can make an appointment with Dr. Maddox by calling 815-772-5550. FYI with Scott Madison, Clinton Mayor. And let's move on now. Uh, we're right here on 13th Avenue and recently a $250,000 grant from the state for improvement along our avenue. Yeah, when we when we re uh, when we redid the road, uh, the plan was to put the trail uh, connected trail system in with uh, with a big, I guess was it five foot wide, I think, or six foot wide, um, like we did on the South Nineteenth, um, like out by the middle school. Uh, funding wasn't quite there for that at the time. It kind of got bumped down the capital improvements list. They have. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the grant right now, but it's specifically through our regional planning affiliation, which handles um, complete streets and all that kind of stuff. So we applied for a trail grant through them, and it comes from the state, and we were approved for 250000 which would be half of the project. So 500000 and then we'll have a nice trail that will connect the middle school all the way down to about 4th Street. Uh, and then hopefully we can eventually, you know, connect that over to the Erickson Center and then maybe start connecting that other places. I know uh, our uh, assistant city engineer, Zane, um, is, is really focused on trail networks and uh, walkability and bikeability. Uh, when we redo manufacturing and bluff, that's going to have a nice trail along that. So we can kind of link those things up, hopefully. Uh, so that's a big focus on that is being able to walk, jog, bike whatever you whatever you like to do or need to do to get anywhere in the community um whether it's you know out to walmart or it's down to jewel or wherever else we want to make sure that we are are able to be mobile not just in a in a car or or a motorcycle or whatever now here on 13th avenue north of course we're located right on the avenue are you looking at the north or the south side of the street i think it will, be, it will be the north side okay so it'll yeah. be on our side it'll be on your side okay. yep yep um, I think there, if you go down, I, I guess I don't know what hundred block it is, but closer down by, uh, by four street, there's already a sidewalk there. Right. Um, I don't know if there is a sidewalk on the other side. I guess I never paid attention. There might be for a little bit. Yeah. Just um, for, I think it's in just front up, of a couple houses and right. that's about it. Yeah. Mm. So it, I think it'll be on the North side is what I, uh, what I envision. And there's the little, the park there too. Is it Kleppy park? I think yes. it's right there. So yep. it'll kind of go right by there as well. Okay, now will it actually be on what is our property now, the grass and stuff like that, or will it be a part of the road? Uh, I think it's going to be in the right-of-way area on the grass side. Um, mm -hmm. I think the road's pretty set on where it's going to be. and Because okay. when we redid it and moved it to the three-lane, we made the, the lanes a little wider. So it may may infringe a little bit on the road on that side, but okay. um, we'd have to talk with Jason, the engineer, to get the exact plan on on how it's going to lay out. But it's coming, which, yeah. is, which is the important thing. So much construction going on right now. Now, I think it was yeah. you that said that Iowa has two seasons, winter <laughs> and construction. Yeah. I wish I remember who told me that because it's <laughs> genius. But, yeah, um, I mean, you go, drive down on uh, uh, River, you drive, and that's – I don't know if they're quite done yet. I don't think yesterday they were quite done yet getting that repaid. But, you know, you kind of kind of bounced along there for a while, and now it'll be nice and smooth, which will be exciting. And we're going to continue to to hit projects here and there and, uh, and, and get all that stuff done before the snow flies, which – it seems like it's getting close to that. And, you know, in my area, right there on 14th Avenue North to the hospital, big improvement from 2nd Street all the way up to 4th Street. Yeah. Um, so every road, uh, every road that we have in Clinton is, is on the list 
uh, for repair or maintenance or whatever you want to say. Um, so uh, Jason and the council too, allocating all the dollars to the to, to the the pavement management plan has really been focused on on fixing and repairing every single road throughout the community. We have 151 miles of road, so mm-hmm. it's a tall order. Yeah. You can't do everything all at once. We have to do it slowly. But um, you know, some of those roads right in that area are, are were getting pretty bad. They yeah. were they were concrete. They were old. Um, they were kind of bowing in places. So I think both avenues to get into the hospital will now be will, yeah. will now be done and paved and nice, which will help for anybody that's going there since they've moved a lot of their services up there away from the other complex. So, Coming up, we've got some fun events. Uh, you're going to be on a bike September 7th. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Chad Jensen at the, the, the bike shop up north there in Lyons asked me if I'd be interested in doing a mayor's bike ride. I said, sure, let's do it. So uh, he's got an event planned September 7th. Uh, four to six will be a farmer's market. Uh, then Brooke Byam is going to play, I believe, from five to seven. She'll be she'll be playing up there, uh, probably at the Four Square Park Band Shell area. And then at seven o'clock, we're going to hop on the bikes. We're going to ride down the river uh, to downtown area and look at the murals and kind of just just make a little loop and then come back. So the bike ride will probably last an hour. It might not be might not be more than that, but it'll just be a fun little event after the farmers market and after Brooke plays to uh, mm-hmm. kind of all all do that. So any idea how many people might be joining you on this bike ride well i hope it's a i hope it's a whole bunch i mean bring you know bring your kids bring you bring everybody i think it'll be a fun time um chad said i have to lead it i don't know if you really want me leading you down the but hey you know (laughs) it'll be a nice slow ride if i'm leading (laughs) and coming up later in the month of september down on our riverfront is this the second or third annual bacon and brew i I think it's the second annual yeah. Bacon and Brew Festival, September 24th. Yeah. Uh, you can get your tickets now to ahead of time, which is important because then they, you know, the brewers know how much beer to have and the food vendors know how much food to have. So get your tickets early. That's going to be a huge event. Josh uh, and his team at the Parks and Rec are continuing to grow that event, which mm-hmm. is which is really cool. Um, and and Great Revivalist is going to be there, who is currently uh, rehabbing the church downtown to bring their brewery here, and yeah. and so they'll be there. Which if you have never tried any of their stuff, you'll get to get to sample that, which will be cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a cool event, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun down there. I can't remember the band that's going to play. Um, but the sh- but they're, but they're pretty good. So. That'll be the twenty fourth. Josh is yeah. actually. I talked to Josh yesterday, and he's going to be coming in sometime to give us a little bit more information on that. Good. Now you mentioned the brewery that'll be coming to downtown Clinton. Did they reach out to the city? How did this come about, Scott? So uh, there was a, a gentleman in town here that was friends with the attorney that is the attorney for them, and uh, somehow caught wind that they were looking to move back into the Iowa area. Or ha- They're not leaving Geneseo. They're going right. to keep their location there, but they were trying to get some operations into Iowa again. And uh, just happened to, he's a history buff and happened to bring up that this building might be available. Um, the, the church has, has not operated for quite some time now down there. And, and the parent company, I think, is based out of St. Louis. That, that's the, the head of that um, congregation or whatever you want to say. And they didn't have any interest in the building. So they mainly worked with the Downtown Alliance. Um, and then the city kind of came in and helped where we needed to as far as that goes. So it was it was mostly outside of City Hall that kind of had that uh, happening and got it together. So that's always exciting to see something like that, too. Yeah. Um, you know, be, I know they're trying to do so much in the downtown. You've got the Wilson building, that project yeah. that is going on yeah. to kind of revitalize the downtown area. Yeah. I, you know, getting people down there that to live down there starts... Uh, starts helping to to revitalize different things because now they need a convenience store or a restaurant or more of that, right? Mm -hmm. Not that we don't need that now, but when you have 36 units of people and then if we can get the Lafayette done and you have another 55 units, now there's a huge demand as people are walking around down there and things like that. So um, pretty exciting. Wilson Building got delayed a little bit. That was on the last council meeting. Um, not not to their own uh, fault, but uh, supply chain. They're waiting on windows 
and, and interior doors and you can't really uh, yeah. you know rent an apartment out if you don't have interior doors that'd be a problem right yeah. uh, and then the windows are special because it's a historic building so they had to get special windows so that we're hoping by October but they're plugging away so they're basically you can have everything done and ready to go and once they get that stuff they'll hang the windows hang the doors and and then start start running out as always uh, appreciate your time as we kind of wrap things up here with you this morning anything you want to throw out that maybe we haven't covered so the far? last thing i'd like to throw out was i want to give a shout out to corporal shane haskell and the police department and all the volunteers and everybody that was involved with the clinton night out on tuesday night awesome event tons of people there was like 25 community organizations with tents uh, that were giving out school supplies and Kiwanis was giving out free uh, or sorry the JC's were giving out free cotton candy there was hot dogs all this stuff so it was a wonderful event uh, I really appreciate um, you know the PD kind of spearheading that and doing all that stuff because it, it, it was just really cool and it was nice to see pies I got a couple pies in my face but it was nice <laughs> to see Greenwalt take some pies and things like that so uh, but it was really fun night so i just wanted to make sure that um that they get the recognition they deserve for putting on a great event for the community you're so active as a mayor appreciate <laughs> you know, it i can still smell the whipped cream in my nose <laughs> <laughs> scott thanks so much thanks Again, our thanks to Clinton Mayor Scott Madison. Now, next Thursday on FYI, we're going to be talking with the command superintendent.